Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. So come into some kind of upright seat and I'm not really picky about what that seat looks like. So I'm sitting in simple cross legs, but you can have one leg extended and one leg bent. You could sit with your feet flipped back behind you and sit in Vajrasana if that's okay for your knees or a kneeling position. You could sit with both legs extended out in front of you. So whatever will allow you to maintain an upright position. And I like to sit up on something, a blanket or a towel or even a block just to give my hips a little bit of a boost so I can find that fully upright position and sit nice and tall. And then we'll take just a second to center. So bringing your hands together, thumbs at your heart center. I'm going to invite you to either close your eyes completely or keep your gaze downcast and your lids heavy. And my theme this morning is about grounding as it's been all week long because I feel just a strong need to really feel the support of my physical body and my connection to my inner being. To feel the ground underneath my feet. So I'm less concerned with what's flying through the air and really rooted in the center of my awareness. So I feel at home inside my body, comfortable or more or less comfortable in this shape and form. So as you breathe in, whatever your natural breath rhythm is, create space between your vertebra, between the bones of your spine by imagining that there are little cushions of light in between each vertebra. And as you breathe in, the cushion, the light increases so that there is a vertebral column of light in the uplift of your whole upper body. And then contrast that with the weight and presence in your legs and feet. So you feel really rooted into your seat, super grounded, but also this uplift through your heart space. And then notice if the quality of your breath has changed as a result of just sitting fully present. Maybe you've noticed that it deepens or even lengthens. And there's no need to force that action. It should just be something that happens just as a part of you sitting up nice and tall. And then I always start class with some kind of chant and ohm to honor the space to separate this time out from all the other times in our existence, all of our daily life stuff. So breathe your breath in and exhale your breath out. And you can chant with me or chant silently. Inhale again. Set your hands down. Go ahead, reach your legs out in front of you. Open your eyes. And we're going to start with feet and toes. I'm so excited to do a Willow Street class and start with my feet and toes. So you'll cross your right leg over and I'm mirroring. And then you're going to take your uh, left hand and weave through your right toes. So I'm going to get each and every toe a little bit separate with my fingers. And then once I've got a good um, interweave of fingers and toes, I start just turning my foot up and down. So I'm pulling my foot back towards my shin and then rolling my toes towards my heel in a wave-like pattern of movement to create more articulation, more movement in my right foot. This emulates the action of walking, this rolling pattern, and just creates a little bit more stability as we walk around and as we move. All right, pause. Widen fingers through toes. Keep the spread of your toes and take your fingers out from your toes and then just relax your foot completely. 
and then we'll take each toe and just rotate it right and left like you could twist off your toe but your toes are firmly attached go ahead do each toe wiggle 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 And then just give your foot a little love, a little bit of a foot massage, squishing the top of your foot. I'm noticing I probably could have used a little more foot lotion this morning. Give it a good rub. Give it a little pat, 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 pat. And then holding onto your ankle, try and shake your foot off. Again, firmly attached and set your foot down in front of you. And then pause and look at your feet. So you might notice some differences, perhaps in the way that they look or even in sensation. So you might notice a sense of energy in your right foot, a sense of presence, of wakefulness, maybe even a little tingling or warmth or a sense of it being cool. And then we'll cross over into the other side. So again, same actions here. Fingers, right fingers, left toes. You're gonna to separate each and every toe. Create a little space between your toes. And then just shake hands with your foot. So it's tempting here to circle your foot round and round. And that's perfectly fine if that action feels great. But for today, and this sense of being really present to our feet and the way that we meet our earth, meet the earth with our feet, I really want this rolling action through your foot. So I'm just trying to create more of a wave. And your foot might move like a solid slab because we wear shoes. Here in Massachusetts, it's still really chilly. And so we're still having to wrap all up. I know you're a little chillier today than you've been. And then widen fingers through toes, create a little space. Good, take those fingers out, sliding them out from your toes and then just relax your foot. And go ahead and rotate each toe, turn, turn, turn. I know this hasn't changed much in the years since I left Willow Street. I still think feet and toes are just pretty awesome. And then once all your toes have been thoroughly wiggled, you're gonna go ahead and give that foot a little extra attention and care, rubbing the top of your foot, playing with the bottom of your foot, really feeling into your feet. Just trying to get a little warmth and heat and width and then give your foot a little pat 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 and a gentle little shake and then extend both legs and once again just notice and do both your feet both look different and maybe feel different and I should say if you can't feel into your feet that's also normal just notice that and then bend your knees and we'll do just a little bit of work with our toes. So spreading your toes out on your mat, go ahead and lift your big toe and only your big toe up. So my big toe mound is still staying grounded. And then settle your big toe down and lift up all the little toes, spreading your toes out wide, working that pinky toe away from your big toe. And then release your little toes, lift your big toe. And we'll switch again, big toe down, little toes up. Little toes down, big toe up. And if it's been five years since you've practiced this, which I'm hoping it hasn't, don't worry, your toes might not move. It's all right. They move as long if you keep practicing this, they really will move. So I've got little toes up, big toe down. And then one more time, little toes down, big toe up. And then all 10 toes down on your mat, stretch your legs out again. And once again, give a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then we're going to come onto our backs. So come into a variation of constructive rest. So I move my blanket to the side and I lie down on my mat. So I'm demoing everything we're doing. So ah, I'm here on my mat and I'm just gonna take a second with knees bent. And once again, come back to that normal rhythm of breath in and out. So notice if your breath feels calm or jagged. If you can feel your feet resting on the mat. And then draw your right knee into your chest so you can hold on with both hands and a little tiny bit of hip flexor stretch or apanasana. 
And then either keep this left foot down on your mat or extend your left leg out straight. And you feel the weight of that left leg balancing out the position of your hips. And then keep your right knee in and release your arms down. And we're just gonna take little circles with that right knee. So I'm just coming through center, reaching my knee out to the right, drawing it back towards my opposite knee and pulling back to center. So little gentle hip circles with my right thigh bone in my hip socket. And for right now, I'm trying to stabilize. So both of my hips stay up towards the ceiling and that works your core just a little bit. And then go ahead and go in the opposite direction, this time crossing the midline with that right knee way over to the left. And I'm gonna really try and explore the whole range of motion. So as always, if you need to make this more gentle, you just make smaller circles. For a little bit more work, you make your circles bigger. And again, you stabilize through your midsection, hip bones point up towards the ceiling. Good, one more round here, big internal and external rotation. And then set your right foot down, bend your left knee, Pause and again, notice the difference between the right and the left sides. Do you feel any warmth or heat? Any sense of energy or tingling? Maybe a sensation of ease and softness? Or maybe you feel nothing. It's also all fine. And then we'll do the other side. So left knee into chest. Just give your leg a little bit of a hug. Again, apanasana. And then maybe your right foot stays planted or you go ahead and extend your right leg out long on your mat. Balance out your hip position by letting your right leg be really heavy. And then release your arms and we get to do circles on the second side. So now my left knee goes out to the left. It comes down and back in towards center. And I'm feeling a lot of rocking through my hips. So I'm gonna try and keep my belly button pointed up towards the ceiling and just take my knee around in circles, moving my thigh bone from my hip socket or hip, thigh bone in my hip socket. Little circles or big circles. Good, and if you're like me, you have one side that moves a little bit more freely. Good, we're gonna in the opposite direction, crossing the midline. I don't have a lot of internal rotation on this side. Again, if you're like me, you may have really big differences between the right and left side. And again, that's totally normal. Bodies are different. We just want to kind of notice and celebrate and acknowledge and let that be part of the ground of our awareness. Good. One more time round here. And then set your left foot down and your right foot down. And once again, pay attention to your body. Notice the right side and the left side. Notice both sides together. Alrighty, so you're gonna roll over. How's our, our back work? You're gonna roll over to your side. Either one is fine. Press yourself back up to take a seat. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that blanket back on my mat so I can sit upright. And then cross your legs, and then you're gonna switch the cross of your legs. So if I have my left shin in front, I'm mirroring. I'm gonna put the right shin in front just to be different and then adjust your hips. So I like to rock from side to side. Some people like to reach back behind and pull the flesh of their buttocks back. I really just want you to feel your sit bones meet mat and your spine once again, creates that lovely extension out from the root of your hips. And then take easy seated, seated twist, turning towards your right with your left hand across. And this is where it's gonna be a little bit different. I love different movement. So you could stay here, or you're just gonna lean a little bit towards your left. And then to add load, you would bring your right arm up and over. So I'm leaning over to the side and getting a side bend in my twist all at once. Again, a super efficient pose. Ground through that whole right hip so the right hip presses as your right arm reaches. And then just take nice deep breaths into the whole right side of your body. And that's more an imaginative exercise than a physical action. And then on your next in-breath, lift yourself back up, turn towards center. 
And again, notice the difference. So my right side feels super long. My left side can use a little attention. So I'm gonna twist towards my left. Press down with your fingers, lift up through your spine. Good, either stay here or take a little lean. Fingertips can stay down or I'm gonna demo the full version of the pose with my arm out over my ear. Using that arm as a little bit of load, I press down through my left hip, reach out through my left arm, and breathe into the whole side of your body. Good. Really press into the earth to lift yourself back up to upright, and then twist towards center. So a little arm warm up because we're gonna do some hands and knees work and I want your wrists to stay happy. So I'm just turning my palms up towards the ceiling, fingers up towards the, sorry, palms towards you, fingers up towards the ceiling. And then I go ahead and lean my fingers as far back as they'll go towards my forearms until I really feel the muscles of my forearms kind of wake up and fire. We're just gonna be here for a breath or two really creating some activation through your forearm muscles. And imagine you're pushing into the floor with your fingers and the circumference of your palm. Fingers wide, heart lifts. Notice if you're squeezing in your shoulders and create a little softness at the tops of your shoulders and a lovely awareness all the way from hips to heart to crown. Good, release your arms back down Ooh, and just shake out your hands. Okay, one more thing in our little seated position here. You're gonna extend your legs, well, really two more things. You're gonna extend your legs with your feet a little bit wide, at least as wide a part of your hips as, as not a little wider. And then take both knees over to the right and then over to the left. So this is a little windshield wiper action and it's just doing that internal and external rotation again. Just go back and forth a few times with breath. A little easy hip and spine warm up. Good, last time. And come back through center, extend your legs out. Wiggle of release. So I'm just shaking my legs right and left. And then I'm going to add to that by going ahead and taking my hands onto my right thigh and locking my thigh bone in the hip socket. Good. And then I do the left side. I'm pressing down. I'm really trying to feel for the bone of my thigh and then just rolling my thigh right and left, right and left. Awesome. And then we're going to do a reverse table. So I'm going to take the blanket off from underneath my hips again. I'm gonna rotate, you can stay wherever you are, just so you can see. And then I turn my hands out to the sides. So we've got some variations for a reverse table. You can just go ahead and roll your shoulders up and back and let your heart lift. That would be variation one. Variation two, you press down through your fingertips and you're just gonna lift your hips any amount up off of the earth until you're making a table position from your knees to your hips. And I like to look down at my belly so my neck feels okay. I'm gonna come all the way back down, stretch your legs out and shake your hands out. Good, take a breath or two. We're gonna do that one more time and feel free to skip it and just do the heart lift, right? I love options. So you've got lots of options here for your class. So my fingers are turned out to the sides, to the long edges of my mat. Roll the head of your arm bones up and back. Good, press down into the air through your fingertips, root through your feet, and then lift your hips and your mouth off of the floor. When I'm looking down towards my belly button, pressing my fingertips down, and I just take a good deep breath here. And then exhale, come all the way back down. And once again, release. And this time, I call this um, like a warrior, right? Where you're just like rolling your wrists, roll your wrists. Good, oh, woe is me, that's what I call this, woe is me. No, woe is me, we're all, we're all making it through. All righty, and then please come into forearms and knees. So this is where I want you to have those blocks or books or something you can stack underneath your forearms. And if you don't have anything and you just wanna do forearms on your mat, that is actually perfectly okay. 
So my forearms are on the mat. You might have a blanket underneath your knees or that towel. And all I'm gonna do is shoulder flossing. So I'm just letting my hands dangle. There's no weight on my hands. And I'm just gonna release my heart space through the gate of my shoulders down towards the floor. And then press your arms down to the floor and do the opposite. Take a deep rounding through your back. You can let your head go. That it's like cat cow, but really with our shoulders. And then go ahead and let your, your blades come more towards together on your back. Your heart might lift slightly. And then press your forearms down. Lift up through your mid back. Feel the rounding through your spine. Take a nice deep breath in here. And then exhale, do that again. <sighs> Soften and release. Shoulder blades move closer together. Heart opens wide. Good, stay connected through your feet and your knees. Press down and lift up, taking another deep round. And then come into a neutral position. And with your forearms down on the blocks, this is challenging. We're gonna try and roll our shoulders. So you're gonna go ahead and create that um, connection between your shoulder blades and then roll your shoulders in big circles and it sounds really easy and it's not actually all that easy to circle your shoulders and this is a closed chain meaning your um, part of your body is connected to the earth that you're trying to move and then go in the opposite direction and you can make your shoulder rolls big or small or just go back to that little um, shoulder flossing where your shoulders come together and come apart. Again, lots of options. And then we're going to take a resting pose. So open your knees wide. Um, you can do what I call hips up child's pose or butt up child's pose where you just rest your head down. Or if it feels okay for your hips, walk your hips all the way back to your heels. Maybe stack your fists or put a block underneath your forehead and rest in your variation of balasana child's pose. Let yourself ground through your pelvis and your legs. You can press your toes down into the mat. And then come on up to hands and knees again. And we're gonna repeat those actions, like either in hands and knees, or you're gonna place your forearms back on those blocks if your hands and wrists are getting tired. That's one of those things in yoga. We do a lot of hand work, but we don't often do a lot of warming up or taking a moment to come off of our hands. So in this gentle class, I want you to have options. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna start with that shoulder flossing. So you are um, soften your shoulder blades together and then push down into the floor through your fingertips or your forearms to widen. And just a few rounds, just like that. Shoulder comes together, shoulders press apart. Good, shoulders come together, heart releases down. Push the floor away. Come into the place of the middle and then go ahead and create some shoulder circles. So I'm just rolling my shoulders up and around with my hands on the mat. Again, that sounds really simple and can be a real challenge. It's good for your brain. And then go in the opposite direction, shoulder rolls the other way around. That's definitely a brain challenge to switch the direction. Good. And then once again, open up your knees. Either stay in hips up child's pose or walk your seat back to your heels. Put something underneath your head, your stacked fists, a block. Maybe you're open enough that you could just rest your forehead on the floor. That is also just fine. Bhavasana, child's pose. Notice the breath in the back of your body as well as the front of your body. Let your head just be really heavy. And then come on up to hands and knees again. All right, so you're going to separate your hands up wide and turn the fingertips, your fingertips, out to the um, long edges of your mat or even off of your mat. You're going to turn them out. And then we're just going to lean right and left. So I'm just swinging my shoulders from side to side over one wrist and over the other wrist. Got a little side lean. 
And then I'm gonna let this action carry me into some figure eights with my shoulders. Again, this is a little complicated for your brain. So I take the right shoulder forward and around, and then I let that swing me over to the left side forward and around. And then right shoulder forward and around, and then left shoulder forward and around. And you're just going back and forth with breath and little figure eight actions. And if it's confusing or you find that your body is not moving in the same way that mine is, it's totally fine. The idea here is just to get some movement for your shoulders. Here's where it gets complicated. We're going to reverse it. Now take your right shoulder back and around. Left shoulder. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Right shoulder. Left shoulder. Back and around. Whoa. Good, go in the opposite way. Good, sit back, either sitting on your heels or coming to a seat or kneeling. And check out those hands again, and then turn your palms up. So I'm kneeling and I'm gonna turn my palms up towards the ceiling and just pull my fingertips back. Getting a little activation through those forearms. Put your fingertips down towards the floor. Really try and touch your own inner forearm. And then do that again, arms lift, pull your fingertips back. And then point your fingertips towards the floor and try and pull your fingers all the way to your wrists. And then release. All right, either you're just gonna stand yourself up or we're gonna come through downward facing dog in order to stand up. So one more time in hands and knees, turn your toes under, lift your knees, stretch your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, or you're in forward fold right now. And I'm going to separate out my feet just a tiny bit, bend my knees, and walk my hands backwards to the back of my mat, and come all the way up, mountain pose. Reach your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, take a big stretch, and then bring your hands to your heart center. I'm going to take the very short stroll up to the top of my mat, get those blocks in position, and we'll take a little lunge series. So I'm standing in Tadasana at the top of my mat. Inhale to reach your arms up and overhead. Big extension through your spine. Nice big breath here. And then exhale, just bow forwards and fold. So I'm in half forward fold. My knees are bent, my spine is long. Press down and lift halfway up. Exhale, come back to that half forward fold. Root into your feet and stand all the way back upright. A little half sun salute. Release your arms all the way back down. We're doing that one more time. Reach your arms up to the ceiling, plant through your feet, activate your legs by dragging your heels isometrically back, and then exhale, come into half forward fold. We're gonna pause in the half forward fold now and either stay where you are or take a little bit of a deeper knee bend towards a chair pose, variation, and then maybe an extension, keeping your knees a little bit bent. Bend your knees and straighten your knees. Bend your knees. Extend through your legs. Pause here. You could keep your hands on your thighs. You could reach your hands down to your box or for more load, reach your arms out and forward. My knees are bent to help support the length through my vertebra and I'm really grounded through fingers, sorry, through feet and toes. Good, root into the earth, stand all the way back upright and bring your hands back to your heart space. And just take a moment standing tall. Notice your feet underneath you, the strength of your legs and the corresponding lift of your heart. Good, open your eyes if you close them, release your hands down, sweep your arms back up and overhead. Exhale, bend forward and fold, holding onto your blocks. You're gonna go ahead, elevate your left foot, step it back behind you and lower your knee down. So that might mean you need a little extra knee padding so you can grab a blanket or even flip your mat over for more support for that left knee or not. And then here in knee down lunge, we're gonna do little open side twists. So my right hand stays down, left arm lifts up and you turn open towards the ceiling. Take a big breath in and then exhale like you're tracing a half circle. You're gonna reach your left arm underneath and reach it all the way underneath your right leg to the right. 
and then do that same twist and I'm going nice and slow. Like I'm just exploring the space around me as my lower half stays super stable. So it's just a thoracic twist with a lot of stability in my lower half. I'm really trying not to move that lower part of my body and just tracing a line with my fingers all the way underneath. And then rotating all the way back and open. And then pause here in the open sided twist. You can keep reaching up towards the ceiling or again for that little additional bit of weight and resistance. I'm stretching my arm out over my ear. Good, just like we did in that seated twist in the very beginning of class. And then rotate back down towards the floor. So this is, I'm gonna keep my hips the same, but I'm gonna try and lift that back knee up off of my mat. So with heavy hips, go ahead, press into your left foot and try and lift that back knee, but keep your hips low. Your leg may not straighten all the way, that's fine. And then lower all the way back down, gentle release. And then two more times, just like that, holding onto your blocks. Go ahead and lift that back knee and see if you can extend your leg. You should feel a lot of work in that back leg. And then lower back down. And then again, third time, just like that. Inhale and lift. Exhale and lower. Good, pause here. Take a moment and I just pointed my toe, just releasing my back foot. Press your back toes down into the mat. Either stay holding your blocks or back up your hips and reach your arms up towards the sky. And just take a moment here in an Anjaneya Asana, a knee down lunge pose variation. So I'm pressing strongly through my right heel and my left foot. My arms lift up and over. So there's that lovely contrast again between the root of our legs and the lift of our heart. Keep breathing. As always, I don't want anybody passing out. And then exhale, hands come down and they'll switch sides. So you'll turn your back toes under, you're gonna lift your back knee and I just do a little bit of a rock forward and maybe it takes you multiple steps. Maybe you're able just to bring that foot all the way forward. Pause here in your half forward fold, hands on leg. And then root down into the mat to come to standing Tadasana. Reach your arms up, just stretch up nice and tall. And then settle your hands down at your heart and take that proprioceptive and interoceptive moment. So proprioception is where, how you know where your body is in space. And interoception is that sensation of your internal self. So how you're breathing, where your organs are, noticing things like your heartbeat, how your breath moves your belly, and then even those deeper sensations, like whether you feel warm or cool, whether you feel lively or deeply lethargic, whether you feel vibrant or super calm, that's all interoception. Good, release your hands. We're gonna come into the other side. So I'm gonna turn myself around. You stay the same. Do, 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 do. Here we go. So second side. Arms reach up to the ceiling. Exhale, hinge from your hip creases, bow forward, hold your box, lift your right foot, step your right foot down and then lower your knee down. So we're here in that knee down lunge position. And we're gonna go ahead and take those um, little sweeps of your arm, nice and slow, not rushing anything. So you bring your right arm high. My left arm is pressing into my left leg, left leg pressing back into left arm. And then I'm gonna reach that right arm all the way underneath towards my left. And then I do it again. Big breath in, just moving really slowly and mindfully as I twist under. And then twist back. Take your time, there's no rush. Good, these nice openings for our thoracic spine, helping us to navigate our day and stay nice and calm with our breath and 
be able to take nice, deep, full, calm breaths in and out. Reach your arm out over your ear now or keep it upright. Again, this is going to be additional work for your back body. Good. Rotate back down through center. I'm going to stay low with my hips, as low as my hips will go. And then I'm, I'm working hard not to move my hips as I raise that back knee and try and reach towards straight. And then I really gently place my back knee back down and do it two more times, just like that. Press back in. As always, you can skip it. Stay in your lunge. It's the lovely thing about being at home. You don't even have the peer pressure of the rest of class. You just do whatever your heart desires. Pause in your lunge. And then either stay here, pointing your back foot, back up your hips, come into a knee down lunge variation. Arms flow up and overhead. And press down through your left heel and the top of your right foot. Reach your arms up and away from your hips. Notice if you have a lot of rib flare, I have a tendency to poke my ribs forward. So I soften back in order to feel more presence in the back of my body as well as the front of my body. Finding the evenness. Good. Take your hands back down. Flip those back toes so you can bring your back knee up off of your mat and either take many steps or a big step forward to come back to half forward fold. Pause here in your half forward fold. Press down through your feet. Come all the way back up. Just finish the dance by reaching your arms up and over and getting a full body stretch. And then take your hands back to the center of your heart space. Alrighty. So we're gonna do a couple standing poses and then come on back down to the floor. So first we've got, I know I teach from my iPad. I always have. So we're gonna do a little triangle pose sequence. So you can either position your box, one on each end of your mat, or I'm just gonna hold on to my shin and not go very deeply into my triangle pose. So step your feet as wide apart as your feet wanna be. And I should also say that if the blocks aren't enough, you could also use a, the support of a chair and hold on to the seat of the chair as you lean over. So I'm gonna turn my right toes out and my, oh, I'm gonna mirror you. Right toes out, left foot in, just a wee bit. And you don't have to have a super wide stance for your triangle pose. And then just take a breath here in star position. So arms are wide. Spine is that super long lift up out of the strength of your legs. And then we'll do little triangle pose ups. So I'm going to reach down for my right shin, left arm high, and then push down into your feet to come back upright. And we'll do that again. Exhale, lean over your legs. Push down into your feet, come back up. Good, third time here. And then one more of these, lift back up. And then exhale, lean down. You're gonna stay in your triangle pose and circle your arm. So my top arm is high and I'm just gonna do big opening circles. And again, like I'm tracing the space through the whole room. And then reverse your circles. If this is too much for your shoulder, you can always leave your arm just reaching up towards the ceiling. And then finally, you can either keep your palm facing forwards or you'll turn your palm down towards the floor. And again, you'll feel the additional work in your side waist and in your core. Good, press through your feet, come all the way back up, back to that star pose position. Turn your feet to parallel, lower your arms and just wiggle your feet back together for a moment. Hands at heart center, and just breathe into your hands. Let your heart rate settle. Come back to that ground of your being. Can you find the steady, calming rhythm of breath? allows you to settle in your body mind.
Go to release your hands, step your feet wide again. Okay, this time left toes turn up, right toes turn in. And notice how I adjust my stance to give myself just the right amount of width. So you do that too. Notice what feels steady and comfortable. And again, if you need to use a wall, a chair to lean on, or your own shin, you find what works for your body. It's your practice. You get to make it yours. Reach your arms out nice and wide. Again, that star pose position. So we're expanding out. Our feet stay grounded, but we're wide open. And then reach down for your own shin or the block. We're going to do little pumps here. So I push down into the floor to come back up. And I'm going to do that three more times, reaching for my own shin. I'm pressing down to lift back up. And again, reach for your shin. Root to rise. And then last time, I lean over. I'm going to stay in Trikonasana and circle my arm in these big exploratory reach around opening circles. And I'm just drawing big shapes with my arm. And then go in the opposite direction. So I'm working core, but I'm also getting a good shoulder opening and a little bit of leg strengthening. And I do love a super efficient pose, something that works your whole body. So again, you can either reach up to the ceiling, it's gonna be less intense, or for more intensity, reach your arm out over your ear and any amount, like it could be in the in-between space. Good, press through your feet, come back up. Lower your arms down, turn your feet round, and then you'll just wiggle back together again. And once again, take that centering moment so you really feel what's happening. With your eyes either closed or your lids heavy, you notice what's going on all the way from your feet, through your legs, through your midsection, to your heart center all the way up to the very top of your head. Include your arms and your hands resting around your heart. Got to release your hands. Step your feet out wide again. Our second little standing pose opportunity here. Turn those right toes out, bend your right knee, and take your arm down on your thigh for side angle pose. So I'm going to just leave my hand at my hip, and or you can reach your arm up to the ceiling. We're just going to roll shoulders so they find their own home. And as you press down through your legs, drag your heels towards one another so you get the engagement in your inner thighs. And then do the opposite. Push the floor away like you could tear your mat in half. So I'm pushing forward and back. And then do the opposite again. Pull your legs in towards one another, little isometric engagements. And then push the floor away. And then find the space where you're doing both. Lift back up into warrior two. Release your arms, turn your feet to parallel and step them back together. Good, take a second, just shake it out how it's big. I always get a little bit more um, challenging towards this part of class. And then step your feet wide again. The good news is that means we're going to settle back down to the floor in just a moment. Turn your left toes out, bend your knee, come into that side angle pose. Again, hand on hip or arm up to the sky. And then we'll work the leg actions. So you'll pull your feet towards one another, feel your inner thighs get really perky, and then push your feet apart like you could tear your mat in two. And then repeating that action, you pull into center and then push the floor away. And then try and find the space where you're doing both. Maybe take a moment here in your side angle where you work both and then come up to warrior two. Release your arms, feet parallel. Step or wiggle them back in. Once again, take a little shake, 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 shake. Let everything go. Good, and then we're gonna come on down to the floor. Yay! All righty, I'm gonna get a sip of tea. Oops. So again, you can sit in any position, coming into maybe a, a Virasana or a Vajrasana or a cross legs. 
So that would be legs, foot, back, behind. And I'm just coming into simple cross legs and we're gonna do a little side bendy, rolly action. So sitting tall in my Sukhasana, or cross-legged pose, just reach your arm out over, I'm reaching my right arm to the left. And then I'm gonna let that arm carry me down to face the floor, maybe trace the line, circle my right arm up and around. That would be your left arm. And then go ahead and follow just like that, one arm at a time, tracing and making big circles up and around. Good, stay strong in your seat. And then the opposite direction, reach out and over with your left arm, circle yourself down and around. Good, just follow along, arm and upper body. All right, when you've done both sides, about equally, come into Baddha Konasana. So I'm gonna use my blocks for support underneath my thighs. You can have them on the low or the medium or even the high side, depending on the openness of your legs. I'm gonna find my sit bones again, so I'm really sitting up nice and tall. And then we're gonna take that little lean and twist here like we started class with. So bring your left hand over somewhere on your right leg, either stay here in the twist, or find that side bend and lean now in bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana. Good, root through your hips, lift through your spine. Inhale, come back upright, twist back through center. Take a little cat-cow moment here in the center. So I'm just rolling over my sit bones forward and back, I'm moving my spine around a little bit, feeling a little wiggle and then twist over to the other side. Right hand on left leg, either stay here or take a little lean. Good, notice your breath. Can you get your heart rate to calm down as you lengthen and extend every breath in and out? Come back up through center again, twist forwards. This time you're gonna take a hinge from your hip. So that might be a more of an imaginative exercise, or maybe you're super stretchy and you can go ahead and kiss your toes. I'm just gonna demo a very moderate little lean forward here. And then breathing here, we'll do those isometric activations again. So push your feet in towards one another. And then imagine that you could pull your feet apart and extend energy from your inner thigh out through your inner knee. And then come back to the pressure on your feet, pressing your feet in towards one another, hips root down. And then do the opposite, act like your feet could pull apart and you reach energy from your inner thigh to your inner knee. And then again, feet press in, spine lengthens even more. And then reach out through your inner thighs to your inner knees, even beyond. And then relax that activation. Walk your hands back up. Reach your legs out and forward and wiggle. Just let your legs go. Good. And then we're going to come back onto our backs. All right. So. Coming onto your back, we're gonna do a little bridge pose, Satu Bandhasana. So if you're feeling tired, you could just lie on your mat in a variation of constructive rest, or with your feet underneath your knees, more or less. You're gonna press your feet down, spread your toes, and lift your hips any amount off your mat. So I'm doing a really small little bridge pose here, mostly feeling my feet, and then circle your hips. I am just tracing that space around and around with my hips, making a little circle. So my hips aren't very high, that's fine. And then go in the other direction. Again, tracing a line of energy around with your hips and pelvis. Good. 
Lower your hips all the way down and take a moment. Breathe into your hands. My hands are resting on my belly. Your hands could rest down at your side. Just get really soft. And then repeat that. We're just gonna press down, lift hips high, and then circle. So I'm going in the other way that I started with from last time. Maybe you notice you have a dominant way that your hips like to circle. That would be normal. Could go in your second favorite way. Rest in the center, and this time just press your feet strongly down and lift your hips up. And then settle your hips back down on your mat. And once again, let your body be heavy and take a moment and become aware of the feeling in your back muscles. Notice that space where your thighs drop into your hip sockets. See if you can feel all the way down into your feet and toes, becoming aware of everything from your low back down. And then we're gonna do a bridge pose, um, bound angle pose variation. So my feet are together, my knees are apart, my knees are not very wide apart, that's fine. Press your feet together, you're on the sides of your feet, spread your toes and then lift your hips any amount. So maybe there's no lift and maybe there's a big lift. It doesn't actually matter, we're just activating different muscles than we normally use in bridge pose. Good, take another couple deep full breaths here, in and out. And then let your hips settle all the way back down. Either point your knees up to the ceiling or separate your feet out wide and let your knees roll in towards one another. So you just did a deep external rotation. Now you're doing an internal rotation. We're gonna repeat that bridge pose just one more time. Again, you can always decide that you like to rest quietly on your mat or place your feet together, knees open wide, take a big breath in and lift up your hips. Good. So you're breathing while you're here holding the pose. You'll feel your glute muscles, the big muscles of your butt activate. It's fantastic. And then I'll walk all the way back down. And once again, either point your knees up to the ceiling or separate your feet out wide and let your knees roll in towards one another for internal rotation. Good, point your knees back up to the ceiling. Take your arms out either and cactus are nice and wide. Lift your feet off your mat and roll both of your knees towards your right. And then as you roll your left shoulder up and around, relax that arm towards or to the earth. Really notice your breath in the upper left quadrant of your lungs. So you feel that whole left chest wall expand and soften. And then for a deeper neck release, actually turn your head towards the right so that you really feel the openness through the long muscle on the side of your neck. Chattara Parivartanasana, or belly twist. Let your legs be heavy but engaged. One more breath here. And then roll back onto your back. Settle your feet down. Take that proprioceptive, interoceptive moment. So where is your body lying on your mat? And can you really feel a deeper sense of your own 
internal self. So do you feel the difference between the right and the left? So the more that we do that, the more that we attempt to feel into the internal space of our body, the more grounded we get, the more in contact we get and aware of our whole physical being. Take your knees over to the other side, your left side, roll your right shoulder up and around. And once again, feel your breath in that upper right chest wall. And to create further neck release, turn your head towards your knees and let the long muscle that goes from the skull down to the top of your shoulder soften on your exhalation. I'll be here for a few breaths. Jatara Parivartanasana. Notice how high my knees are. That's to take some of the twist out of my low back and put it more in that thoracic spine, the shoulder blade part of your spine. Go roll back onto your back. Gently rock yourself from side to side, knees in close, little massage across the back of your pelvis. Circle your knees, both of them going together. Go one direction. Circle your knees in the other direction. Good, separate out your knees. Do little swimmy circles with your knees. Go the other way around. And then release your feet down. You could put something underneath your knees or stretch your legs out and let your legs be heavy. Slight external rotation through your legs. Maybe adjust your hips, tucking your pelvis under and then scooching your back body back. You could put a blanket or that towel underneath your knees or underneath your head. And then let your whole body rest down now on your mat, legs heavy. Feel the weight of your hips and the back of your pelvis on your mat. Relax the skin between your eyebrows. And let your jaw be soft. Your jaw is so relaxed that it almost feels like your lips could part, but they don't. And then come back to your breath. So that with every breath you soften, you find more of a release and a ground. Your eyes are closed, your eyes are heavy lidded. So that you're able to take that internal moment of reflection. Once again, sensing breath and body giving yourself this moment of integration, of awareness, and as much serenity as you can manage in this moment.
If you have a few more minutes to spend in your Shavasana, I suggest just resting here quietly on your mat for as long as you've got. If you need to move on with the rest of your day, please roll to your side and lift yourself back up to take a seat. And I wanna thank all of you for coming to do class with me today. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to teach. I bow to each of you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Have a really good day. Thank you. Stay well. I'll see you next week.